Hello everyone, we just arrived in San Diego. We had the super spontaneous idea to go to San Diego for the weekend. So we just arrived, I'm super excited. I've never been to San Diego. My boyfriend actually used to live here. So I'm also excited for, you know, letting him show me around. And I'm gonna show you our hotel room, which actually looks way more like, like an apartment in a second. And it is dog friendly. So of course we brought our dog and I'm so excited for this weekend. And of course this vlog, I'm gonna take you with me on my first time in San Diego. Here comes our little room tour. Of course, we have Blueford with us. He's very happy to be here. And so we're like literally in downtown San Diego. And I think I said it before, but this place really reminds me of little New York. This is the view from our window. There's the pool down there. And we kind of have like a little, it looks like a little apartment space, honestly. Both of us brought some work, so we can do some work here. But we're also gonna hang out and relax. Again, Bluford is really happy to be here. This is our little bedroom. <laughs> Hello, sir. <laughs> Another window. <laughs> and this is our bathroom. I am not gonna lie, I love this bathroom. It is so spacious, it had a huge tub. Again, view out of the window is just absolutely stunning. And I just love the little details here. Look at those little water handles. It's little fins, and I just love the style and the details. The colors, like the design of this place is absolutely stunning, and it honestly really feels more like a so little Airbnb the first Airbnb night we actually went down and got like a, a few drinks room. at the so hotel bar, really, and I'm really gonna tell you right here. now, being recovered is amazing because I'm definitely not afraid of liquid calories anymore. And after that, Quan took me to this beautiful place. I actually wanted to film how we were like sprinting up the stairs, but we were both so out of breath. So I didn't want to be embarrassed, but this is the view. Look at this amazing view of San Diego. And here's the view out of our apartment at nighttime. After that, we actually went to bed because we were both super tired and we were ready to start the day refreshed and after a good night's sleep. Good morning. So we just woke up. Quan took the dog out. As you can see, I had my little coffee. I just relaxed. I really love my calm mornings. This is actually something that adds so much quality to life. So whenever I can, I really try to have a slow morning. And now we're actually gonna go to the gym. So I normally don't post a lot about working out because I know that it can be very triggering. But I just want to say the only reason why I can work out here and there without being triggered and without it having anything to do with my eating behaviors because regardless of if I'm working out or not, I will eat. Like I never have to earn my food. I don't eat more or less when I work out or when I not work out. So the only reason why that is and why I got to that point is because I rested for a very long time. When I was in the depths of my eating disorder, I would walk a lot every day. And I know that this is nothing that everyone has. So if you don't experience or experience this, this doesn't make your eating disorder any less valid. But this was just a big issue for me. Like I really had a huge urge to move. If you guys have seen my other video about the urge to move, you understand why that is but I really had to learn to rest. And I say that over and over again. I always say that to my clients. Oftentimes after a period like this, we have to learn to rest again. So this is what I did. I actually rested for a very long time. No movements, no working out, especially no collecting steps. I deleted all my step counting things. I got rid of all of this. And I also made sure not to move any more than I really had to, which meant for me to not even walk around a lot. I always tried to take the bus or the car whenever I could. And I also like, because in the beginning of my recovery, I actually was very low on energy. I didn't even do a lot. So for me, taking a break from exercise was one of the hardest things I've ever did, especially while still listening to my extreme hunger, because for a lot of people, this is actually connected, but it was also the best thing I could have done. I am so glad that I did not work out in my recovery because first of all, it will just postpone your recovery. There's a billion reasons why you should not work out in recovery, especially from a restrictive eating disorder. A few of those are because your body really needs to rest. In order to revire, you need to learn that resting is good. Your nervous system has to calm down. Your body needs all of the energy to fix everything internally and externally. And again, just to learn that resting is good, just to revire. It is so important to rest. 
So yeah, I'm so glad that I did this and that I'm now at a point where I can actually go to the gym here and there and honestly there are days I don't have the energy and that's fine. I like right now to push myself as much, I try, you know, to not do too much and it's actually very helpful to go with a partner because my boyfriend is very very helpful in that. Um, he, he knew my story from the beginning, as you guys know he's a personal trainer. Um, but that was never an issue, if anything, that was actually pretty helpful for me because he would always make sure that I'm not overdoing it. So yeah, the only reason why we can hit the gym now and it's not an issue for me is because I actually took the time to rest. And I, I always tell my clients, if you are in recovery from a restrictive eating disorder, resting is key. I always mention the three R's, re-nourishing, resting and rewiring. And as you can see, this is like a big part of recovery. So I just want to share this because when I share that I'm working out, it might come off a little bit uh, triggering for some people, but the only reason why I can do that is because I rested. So let's go. We just finished up our workout, but I, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is, of course you don't have to go back to working out after recovery. Find what works for you. If that's stretching, yoga, pilates, weightlifting, there's nothing wrong, but you don't have to go, for instance, back to weightlifting. Because when I look at social media, there's a bunch of people telling you that this is what you have to do. It is way more important, first of all, to concentrate on your recovery and to make sure that you're really at the right place. I actually recently uploaded a video about that and how to know that you're at the right time to start working out again. But it is also super important to focus on what works for you. And if this is just by going for a walk once or twice a week, that's perfectly fine. Don't pressure yourself to do like a workout. We're kind of out and about in San Diego. We just went to this rooftop bar and honestly, I was so much in the moment that I just forgot to film, which I guess is not the worst. But I just wanted to show you guys where we are at now. I'm just gonna show you some more clips in a minute, but we're actually gonna look for some food and some more drinks and we're just enjoying the night. So come with us. Okay, we just got to get breakfast. How did you like yours, babe? It was great. <laughs> yeah, no, mine was pretty good, man. Like, um, I got this cool cinnamon um, pancake, super good. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really not picky with food, but I give it a four out of 10. Again, like, you know, I'm really not picky with food at all, but I still ate it because we just worked out and I know I need energy. Well, I didn't eat all of it, but it is what it is. Sometimes but food is not perfect and food doesn't not have to be great. perfect we all the time. Went to this brunch so place I'm not tripping. I still got my food, so I was super happy. And then we actually had to go back to LA already.